In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to increase or decrease your normal map intensity the correct way. And you will often want to do this to make your material normal map to be more pronounced or less pronounced. So let's get started. So I'm actually going to show you two different ways of controlling the intensity of your normal map. This first way is the one that I always go with, and it's the one that I recommend you go with as well. The second way is a very quick way that will also increase or decrease your normal map intensity. And the second way, you'll remember it more because it's a simple way of setting up your graph. But I recommend that you always go with the first way, and if you need it quick and dirty, then go with the second way. So very quickly, the material that I'm going to use contains three different textures. So let me open this up. We have a base color, we have a roughness, and here's the normal map and it creates this result right here, which is red natural brick. I also have a material instance setup, and this is what I'll be changing and control the normal map intensity. We'll have a value here to increase or decrease that intensity of that normal map. If you don't know how to create materials or material instances, take a look at other two tutorials I've released to help you get up to speed. So the very first way and the one that you should always go with is done through a component mask, where you isolate the red and the green channel, set up your intensity, and then you connect back the blue channel. This first way is the most efficient and the best way of doing so because you are isolating to control your intensity through two different channels, leaving the blue channel alone unaffected. And this is the correct way of controlling your normal map intensity. You do not want to have the blue channel affected when you are changing your normal map intensity. So let me go ahead and disconnect this normal map and let's set this up. First, you need a component mask. So right click on the empty space, search for component, and you need this right here, component mask. By default, you are already isolating the red and the green channel, and that's what we have right now. Then we need a multiply. Hold down M and left click, or search for multiply. Then we need a scalar parameter so we can expose this inside the material instance to make this controllable through the instance. So simply hold down S and left click. This will insert a scalar parameter. You can also insert a constant one vector, one and left click, and then convert this to a parameter. This will do exactly the same thing. Then rename this. So something you can recognize, we'll name ours normal map intensity. And the default value you want to give this is 1. This will be unaffected as if you are viewing the normal map without any setups. So let's go ahead and connect this right now. I'm going to take the RGB, connect it to component mask. Our normal map intensity is going to go into multiply B, and this mask will go into multiply A. Next, we need to connect back the blue channel. Right now, what we're doing is increasing or decreasing the intensity of only the red and the green channel of the normal map leaving the blue channel unaffected. And that's what you want. But now we need to connect back the blue channel before we can plug this in into the normal map input. To do this, simply insert an append node, which is this one right here, append vector. And then hold down one and left click and change this value to one. This is a constant one vector that will append the blue channel or the leftover channel that's not a part of the setup at the moment. And then take the multiply, append it to A, and then your one vector will go into B. This right here adds the blue channel back in. And before we connect it to the normal map, it's recommended that you normalize these values, bring them back to the correct value. So whatever you're changing here, it goes through normalize. So the values for your normal map go back between zero and one. So you don't get any weird artifacts or lighting within your normal map when you are increasing your intensity. This is recommended and the normalize node is very cheap to use. Uh, I've used it before without it and I haven't really encountered any issues, but again, normalize is very cheap and it just normalizes those values back down to correct range of 0 to 1. So go ahead and search for normalize and insert it. And simply run the append into normalize, and now you, whatever the output is, connect it to your normal map input of the material, like so. And this is your setup right here. That's it. Now if we change our normal map intensity value to go above 1, it will increase the normal map intensity, and below 1 will decrease it, and 0 will flatten everything out. Now let's go ahead, hit apply, and test it through the material instance. We're going to bring back our material instance editor, and you can see here we have our normal map intensity. Let's go ahead and zoom in so we can see what's happening, and let me make the screen bigger. I'm going to enable the normal map intensity and increase it. If I go to 2, it will intensify the normal map. If I go higher, it will go even higher. There's going to be a certain range where it's not going to look very good, so you want to probably lower it to an acceptable range. So here's the default. 2 looks pretty good. If you want to flatten this down or decrease it, go below 1, closer to 0. So 0.5 will decrease it more, and if you want to completely flatten your normal map, go to 0. So this is the best, the most effective way, and the most correct way to control your normal map intensity. 
The second way provides you with a quick way to prototype your normal map intensity. So if you can't quite remember how to create these nodes and you're working on something and you want to just quick and dirty way of increasing or decreasing your normal map without having to look this up, here's what else you can do. Let me go ahead and disconnect this. That's the one I'm going to use later. So to do this, you can use a flat normal node available inside Unreal Engine. So let me uh, actually, let me bring back the normal map. I'm going to duplicate this so we have a copy of it. Search for flatten normal. This node is a function. So if you double click on it, it'll open you up and you can see what's happening and how it's set up. So what flat normal will do is it will actually flatten normal. So let's go ahead and set this up without any extra nodes except for the scale parameter to control flatness. And then I'm going to show you how to invert it. So it makes it easier for you to control. So let's take the RGB connected into normal map input of the flat normal. Then we need a scale parameter to control the flatness. I'm going to hold down S and left click and let's name it flatten normal. And let's leave it at zero at the moment. Connect it into flatness. And then we need to normalize these values so they with an acceptable range of zero to one and they don't create any weird artifacts or lighting issues with our normal. So we need a normalize before we connect it to our material. So result of flatten normal will go to normalize and then output is going to go into normal. Let's hit apply and take a look what's happening. Let's enable flat normal. So at the value of zero, nothing is happening. This is our default normal. And if we go to one, it's going to flatten the normal. So it's doing exactly what you'd expect it to do with the name of the node. It's flattening the normal. So value of zero, default one is flattened. And if you go below zero, let's say negative one, it's going to intensify it. So it's essentially increasing the intensity to two. Now, this is not a very intuitive way of using the flat normal. So let's uh, make some adjustments. So instead of increasing the value or going into the negative value, what we can do is run a one minus. So from the flat normal, we need a one minus node. So it inverts the values we're going to be using. So right click and search for one minus. Let's connect the flat normal into one minus and then one minus goes into flatness. And now let's rename this to something more acceptable now that makes sense. Normal map intensity. And I've left no spaces to make it different than what we had before. But again, you can name this anything you want. And then it goes through flat normal. We have normalized and it's connected back into normal. So let's go ahead and hit apply. Take a look at our map and let's uh, revert the value back to default. So right now it's flattening at zero. Let me go back and let's change this to one. This is the default value, which will be the actual normal map intensity as if no changes are being made. Let's hit apply, go back to our map and let's revert this to default of one. That's what the default is for this intensity value. So here's the unaffected normal map as it appears as is without any changes being made. And now because we're using one minus, we don't have to go into the negative value. We can use this as expected. Zero will flatten. One is the default. Two will increase the intensity, just like the first setup we used. So this is a very quick and dirty way to help you prototype whenever you cannot remember how to set up the other way, the first way. So use this whenever you need it. It's very quick. It does work and I sometimes use it. But then in the end, whenever you are done making your asset, the correct way and the best way is this setup right here. And this is the one you should be using for your final meshes. Now, this was just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to creating materials and setting them up within the standard material editor. If you want to learn more, take a look at UE5 Master Material Creation Tutorial Course. It's the complete tutorial course that shows you a lot more for everything you need to know on how to begin set up your master materials for your environment assets and props.